Today we're talking all about chains and how you can use them to get lots of goodies in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Hello everybody, Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games. So yeah, as I said in the intro there, today we are going to be talking about chaining. Now, a lot of people are somewhat familiar with what chaining is. They have some general idea of how it works and how you do it. But today we're going to cover in depth exactly what it is, how you use the very famous Poke Radar to do it, and what kind of benefits you can get by doing these chaining processes. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump in and cover all of this right now. But before we do, I just want to take a second to ask that if you like the videos we have here on the channel, please make sure that you actually like them by hitting the thumbs up button. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing community, ensuring that you never miss any of our awesome videos just like this. This one. All right, now getting started, let's talk about what is a chain because a lot of people, again, have some idea of what it is, but they don't know exactly how it works, how it operates, and that kind of stuff. So let's just jump right in. So now, chaining. According to Smogon, chaining is the act of essentially encountering a certain Pokemon many times in a row using an item called the Poke Radar. So when the Poke Radar is activated, several patches of grass shake and or flash, which means the Pokemon are hiding there they can be encountered by entering that patch. Chaining can be done um, in any field of grass in Sinnoh, large enough to sustain a successful chain, which tends out to be a nine by nine square. And conveniently, there are a ton of these in Sinnoh right before every major town. So that being said, everybody, effectively what you need to do for chaining, the game by using Poke Radar is going to give you bonuses and benefits if you encounter the exact same species of Pokemon over and over and over again. Now. The Poke Radar is a very unique tool in that it allows you to do this, but really what you need to have happen is encounter the same Pokemon as many times as possible so that you can reap the benefits of, you know, seeing this many Pokemon. Now, a lot of people have asked this. If you have, like, for example, if you're trying to get uh, Snover and you keep getting Snover and then you encounter something like a Sneasel, will that break your chain? Absolutely yes. You have to encounter X amount of Snover, not just X amount of any Pokemon. And now there are going to be some different strategies for what to do when you find the Snover, but do keep in mind, you need to find only that one type of Pokemon for the chain to continue. And that's how you get your benefits. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on. How do you do it? Obviously, this is the most important question. A lot of people just know it involves the Poke Radar, but then what do you do? Well, let's kind of take a look in here. We have kind of a, a video kind of showing some aspects of it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go and visit um, Professor Rowan after you've beaten the game and you will get the Poke Radar. Now, what you do, like we said there, you go into a large patch of grass. Ideally, kind of like nine by nine is about right, but there's a couple different areas you can do it in. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. It just needs to have a lot of grass. And then what you do is you activate the Poke Radar. And as you can see, four patches of grass are jumping up and, you know, shaking here. So what you want to do is you can really, for the first one, just hop in and see what you get. You really want to use things like you know, repels to try and make sure you don't encounter any other Pokemon along the way. And you want to look at the Pokedex to actually try and figure out what Pokemon are in the area that you're going to be in, because you want to really try and encounter the specific Pokemon you want. Unless you just want to just try to see whatever you can get by doing this, that's fine too. But if you want a specific target, you need to make sure that your Pokemon's in that area and able to be accessed through this method. So that being said, when you encounter your first Pokemon, you obviously have three options as far as what to do with the Pokemon. You can run, you can KO it or you can catch it. Now, if we look at the chart here, right now we're going to look at specifically the, the uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl rates for continuing your chain. So capturing the Pokemon, if you do want to catch that Pokemon, you're going to have a much greater odd of continuing your chain after you do this. So if you do not capture it, you just knock out the Pokemon, you have at least a 53% chance of continuing your chain. However, if you capture it, that very low level goes up to 63. So as you can see, there's a 10% greater benefit to actually catching that Pokemon than just knocking it out. Now, when you see those four patches of grass shake, there are going to be four degrees of kind of distance from you. There's going to be like the nearest one, a middle one that's kind of close, a second middle one that's a little farther away, and of course the farthest fourth one away. The further one away from you is going to have the highest odds of continuing your chain based on whatever method you had previously, if you knocked it out or caught it. Now, obviously on the chart here, we can see that if you do catch it and you go to the fourth one, you will have a 93% chance of continuing that chain with the next event. Now, here's where things are a little tricky. So even though 93% sounds really good, the 7% chance of failure accumulates as you get into the higher chains. So 
Obviously, we kind of talked about this in some previous videos. One of the best numbers to get with chaining is 40. Uh, we're going to cover that in this video again, so I'm not going to explain why right now. But effectively, you need to get you know to these like 30, 40 chains to really see some of these big benefits. Now, to get to a 40 chain with a continual 7% you know chance of failure will result in a potential 5% chance to actually attain a 40 chain using these methods and using the four method here. So we don't really know why, um, as you can see here, a lot of the methods have actually gone up from how they were in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, but we don't know why um, specifically for capturing and for you know not capturing with stage four there, why we see a diminishing sort of number there. Um, we're gonna kind of cover this again later in the video too, but again, as far as how to do it, you want to activate your Poke Radar, either catch or knock out the Pokemon. Do not run because that will break your chain as well. And then stay in the grass area. And after you, you know, are done with that encounter, the radar will automatically activate again and you will get four more grass patches that are shaking. Now, obviously, you want to keep going to the one that's ideally farthest away because that gives you your best chance of continuing. But if you do take one of the ones that's closer, you know, it's not the end of the world, but just, you know, be aware that it may kill your chain a little more quickly. Also, you want to look for the grass that's going to be shaking more vigorously, a little faster. That's typically also the best one for continuing your chain as well. All right. So now hopping back here, uh, as I said there, as you saw in the previous chart there, there's some differences from how things were in the old Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum to how they are now in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So what changed? Like, what's the big difference here? Well, here's what I kind of wanted to cover. So as you can see, in the instance of, you know the one, two, and three distance for the encounters in BDSP for both not capturing and capturing, we see actually a pretty considerable raise from the encounter chances before. So in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, for example, if you took a one uh, and you did not capture it, right? You had a 28% chance of continuing your chain, whereas in BDSP, that goes up to a 53% chance. So that's almost double. Like that's pretty good in my opinion. Now, also, if you capture it, it went from like 38 to 63. Again, pretty great. Like, these are pretty good odds. And then, you know, we see that, you know, we have, if you have a two, it goes from 48 to 63 um, or, you know, 58 to 73. So we see these big jumps. But then we see on the four, like the farthest one away, which is typically the one people would go for, because if you look here for capturing it back in um, Gen 4, you would have a 98% chance of continuing your chain as long as you, you know, didn't counter that Pokemon in the fourth farthest uh, area. So now though, it's 93% chance if you capture it and no capture went from 88 to 83. So what this all means is let's assume that in both Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, you took the best odds of continuing your chain. And then let's take a look at that compared to how they are in BDSP. Now I have the numbers up here uh, above the chart for you. So in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, if you wanted to reach a 40 chain, you had approximately a 45% chance, assuming you went for those 98% every single time and you didn't have any failures. In the instance of BDSP to reach 40, it's only 5%. Now, that being said, it is somewhat offset by the increased shiny odds. Now, again, the shiny odds are something that's pretty complicated that we're going to talk about. We actually did an entire video on that, which I might actually link ahead right now. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's interesting to see that that's dropped so much. Now, a lot of people are wondering why they would do that. And, you know, it's it's strange because it seems like they really want to, in a lot of ways, provide a better experience for people. Um, and then they kind of give us this really cool shiny bonus and then take this aspect of it away. Meaning that you have a really good chance of encountering a shiny because you're going to get guaranteed shinies when you get to a 40. But actually getting to a 40 is pretty difficult. So... Why would they do this? Let's let's kind of think about that real quick. So as best I can figure out and talking with some other, you know, content creators and some other, you know, just fans of Pokemon in general, the consensus we've reached is that there's po three possible explanations. So number one, it's a bug. And we're going to talk about this a little later. As you can see, there was some uh, indications or maybe a little trouble with the Poke Radar in my main uh, menu screen there. But number two, it could be designed to balance the higher, higher shiny odds because people know that you know, the, the game designers know, even though it's not Game Freak, it's Pokemon and Ilka making this, um, or ILCA, whatever the heck the name of the company is, I don't know. Um, they know that people are going to go for those fours to try and get shinies, and they maybe figure like, well, let's boost the shiny odds up a little bit, but uh, at the same time, we'll make it harder to establish the chain. That is possible, don't get me wrong, it just, I think that's a perfectly sound idea, 
My issue with it is that I don't know why they would approach it this way. Like if they wanted to make it kind of better, but also worse, I mean, you could basically just keep it the same way it was and keep it as a one in 200. Whereas this way, you know, it's much more of a struggle to get to the 40, but then you're rewarded like almost immediately by having much better shiny odds. So I'm not really sure why they did it this way, but that's certainly a possibility. The other possibility that we've thought about is perhaps they're trying to encourage like random patch interactions. So they don't want people to go to that fourth one and specifically hunt it forever to just try and, you know, get that one shiny. They want you to just pop that radar on and jump into the nearest grass and hope it all pans out. So that kind of could make sense to me. I mean, again, these are kind of what everybody's thinking in the community right now. Um, I think that could make sense because they want people to kind of explore with it and, you know, just talk about how they're falling, you know, pardon my French, but ass backwards into shinies. So um, I can see that being a thing. But again, I don't really know exactly why they would go about it this way. So just things to consider. The, all we know right now is that the odds of establishing these chains are harder in these games than they were in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum. But again, uh, if you can get these big chains, there are a lot of payoffs and we're going to talk about those next. So as you guys can see, now we've talked about kind of how to do it, you know, the, some of the, the issues we've had so far, how things are a little different. So what can you get? All, all this is, you know, leading up to this. What are the actual benefits by doing these processes? So the first one is perfect IVs. So as we can see, uh, we're going to again cover some of this later and go through a little bit more of this down at the bottom. But in the Poké Radar, we do see that as you start getting more and more encounters and your chain gets higher and higher, you begin to get um, higher and higher perfect numbers of IVs. So it looks like when you hit a uh, 20 chain, let's see here, you have at least one, um, or well, you're supposed to have at least one perfect IV from 20 going forward and then two at 30, three at 40, etc., all the way up to what would that be, uh, 50, 60, 70, perfect IVs at 70. Now, Really, for breeding purposes, you only really need three IVs uh, to start really cranking out some good, seriously competitive Pokemon. Um, but that being said, we don't. Th there's kind of an issue with this right now, again, which we're going to cover at the bottom when we talk about some of the bugs. Um, but right now, we do know that the higher chain you are able to get correlates to an increase in getting perfect IVs. Now, we, as of right now, we don't know the exact formula or if this is going to be updated in the future but we do know that more pokemon encounters longer chains does equal higher ivs to some degree now let's talk about the other thing here hidden abilities this one is going to be pretty darn simple so let's go ahead and just dump you know jump right in here and uh see what we have so this one's probably the easiest and most straightforward one as you can see here uh as long as you are using the poke radar you have a 1 in 128 odds of encountering hidden abilities with your Pokemon. So this is pretty cool because, like, I mean, obviously, you know, we have the ability patch these days to, fit, you know, change things. But still getting hidden abilities can be a bit tricky. And, you know, ability patches, as we know right now, are kind of difficult to get. Um, so this is actually really cool that you can just kind of, you know, while you're doing this process of getting the chain going, you can start picking up some hidden ability Pokemon. And it doesn't really increase you know, no matter how much you're using it, but as long as you're using the radar, you do have those one in 128 odds, which isn't bad. I mean, you're going to be encountering a lot of Pokemon to make this work. So, you know, the fact that you can just randomly get some hidden ability mons is pretty cool because then you can start, you know, breeding them down, getting more hidden abilities going. So I think this is really cool. Um, I think it's a really good idea um, for, you know, them to include that and have a way to do it that doesn't require a lot of work. We are kind of seeing that mentality in this game that a lot of sort of bonuses are a bit more um, passive and having the ability to just get hidden abilities while using the Poker Radar is pretty awesome and certainly is something that a lot of people are going to be fans of. All right. Now, of course, the reason you are all here, shiny Pokemon, right? Now, again, we did do that video that I linked earlier. I'm also going to link it in the description talking all about the shiny odds in the game. But we are going to do kind of a really brief kind of cliff note summary here of how that all works. So with the shinies, again, typically in the past, the best you could do if you hit that 40 chain was a 1 in 200. Now, that being said, in the current games, the odds are going to cap out at 1 in 99. Now, again, shiny charm does not work as of right now, which may be a bug in and of itself um, for anything except eggs. But in the case of the Poké Radar, it doesn't matter because either way, it would cap out at 1 in 99 once you got to that 40 chain, which also means with four patches of grass popping up, you effectively have a 1 in 25 chance of finding a shiny once you get to that you know 40 stage. And that's pretty busted. Those are really insane odds, which I talked about before. 
obviously getting to that point is going to be a real pain in the rear end because of the way they've done these uh you know chain encounters here but that being said if you are able to get there you will be rewarded um and you know it's it's just very interesting to see these kind of changes to the shinies but again if you do want more of an in-depth explanation as to how to get all these please make sure you check out the other video we made because we really do in go in depth as far as how to get shinies what they look like and all that stuff and obviously if you do encounter a shiny you will see a you know sparkly patch of grass which will give you that guaranteed shiny so there's no questioning whether or not you will get it now we've covered all the cool stuff that you can get with these um with the poker radar with the chaining all that stuff now a lot of people think that poker radar is broken <laughs> and fr frankly given how some of the features in this game are behaving at this point that's a fair belief to have and let, let's cover why so so yeah, as we can see, there are quite a few issues the players have been having with these games regarding the Poke Radar. So, first off, in the videos on the left, they're coming to us from Kurt at uh, Kapodix, and as we can see, this individual actually had over a 100 chain going, and they discovered, unfortunately, that some of the shaky patches of grass turned into invisible walls for them. Like, what, you know? Like, so they were just walking, and boom, brick wall. And obviously, because they hit a brick wall, they can't enter that shiny patch anymore. So they're going to have to leave the area, recharge the poker radar, and then start over again. So the reason this is such a big problem is because their entire chain went away and they got nothing for it. I mean, if anybody out there is a fan of Minecraft, this feels like you built a giant, awesome, incredible statue, and then a bunch of creepers came and just blew it up. Like, the game literally decided to take away your, your chain for no reason. So this is a really big problem. We don't yet know what triggers it or what kind of causes this to happen. So I assume they're going to have to fix it or patch it at some point. But again, this is an issue that can happen. So objectively, this is a bug that's going to have to be addressed. Now, if we look at the other issues here. So the one that also appears to be a bug is the IV thing. So we talked about that a little bit earlier. But what I'm talking about here. So at, once you hit a 20 chain, you see that the Pokemon you encounter has at least one perfect IV. Now... Common sense would think that from 20 until 30, the next hurdle, all those Pokemon encounters should have at least one perfect IV. That is not what we're seeing here. If you look at the data tables, it only applies currently to encounter number 20 gets one perfect IV. Then encounter number 30 gets two. But anything between, you know, 21 to 29, zilch. And then 31 to 39, also zilch. And then 40, you get the uh, three perfect IVs. I don't know what's going on with this. I have to assume this is a mistake because... There, there's no reason for them to restrict, you know, not just to make it hard to get Pokemon with perfect IVs like this, but to make it so narrow that it has to be that particular encounter that can only yield you any benefits, especially when they've made chaining more difficult, as we've seen in the chart here. So I imagine, again, you know, we don't have any confirmation that this is a bug. It really feels like it. So I imagine this might be patched in a future update as well. Now, the last thing we did want to talk about is the... Um, you know, continuation of your chain numbers here. So as we can see again, it went, all the numbers went up. So you have your one, two, and threes in terms of the distance. They went up from like 28 to 53, 48 to 63, 68 to 73. Oh, we see these great gains and then the drop-offs on the four slots. And I don't know why, again, they would do that. So, you know, a lot of people think they did this on purpose as we kind of talked about before, but I, a lot of people also think there's a reasonable chance it's a bug that they just, you know, hit a, forgot to carry the one or something here or there, and uh, they took five points off instead of either keeping it the same or doing anything like that. So again, you know, we don't really know what's going on here. I'm not, you know, able to say for sure what the deal is with this particular issue. However, it is causing people to have trouble getting some chains going. So until we have confirmation, we can at least assume it's a possibility that it's also a bug as well. So again everybody you know chains and you know being able to get these big chains going and get all the benefits are great they are really amazingly cool benefits of this era and they certainly are kind of a good callback to a very cool shining method from the past but you need to keep in mind that right now they have some problems and you know as soon as you beat the you know game on day one go get that radar it may not be functional functioning as optimized as it could be once we have all these issues taken care of so you know i imagine at least some of these are going to be resolved at some point because it seems like, you know, the companies that are handling this are really on top of it and they want to be able to take care of the problems now that they're found. 
I mean, they did release the day one patch early to try and address, you know, a lot of the concerns that people were having. Like, I've never really seen a company kind of give in to the people that were disseminating their, you know, IP illegally. But it's interesting to note that they did release it that much earlier so people could actually get their hands on it and begin to kind of tell people that a lot of the problems were fixed. However, these problems were not fixed. And we need to, you know, obviously keep in mind the game is still early. It's coming out on uh, Thursday or well, Thursday at midnight for me. I'm in the uh, North America on the Eastern time zone. So Friday is the official day it comes out. But uh, again, do keep in mind there are issues that they're going to be trying to fix as they find them. And, you know, as you're going for your, you know, shinies, your hidden abilities, your perfect IVs, this thing could happen to you. So just be aware of it. And, you know, just don't freak out if it does happen. Just keep in mind you may have to start over again. But hopefully again, they do resolve this problem as quickly as possible. And, you know, we can finally have a Poke Radar working at, you know, peak efficiency. So there you have it, everybody. Everything you need to know about chains and how to do Pokemon chaining with the Poke Radar in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, obviously, you can use these for a ton of different benefits, but keep in mind that it is going to be a lot of legwork to get these chains set up because the you know system they have in place to get them going now is kind of worse than it was before, and it's going to take a bit of effort to actually get there. But again... The benefits that you do get once you get there, especially those shinies, are pretty awesome. So do consider using this method to get some of your shinies in the new games. So that being said, everybody, I hope you liked this video and found it interesting. And if you did, remember to absolutely get, get impact that like button in the face and consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community. Again, we have videos that go up like this all the time and you're not going to want to miss them. So that being said, everybody, I've been Blaine from Virtual Games. Keep an eye out for our Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl playthroughs over on Twitch, which are going to start up on Friday as soon as the games drop. And as always, make sure that you keep an eye out for all the videos we have here going up almost every single day right here on YouTube. I hope each and every one of you have an awesome, epic, and amazing day, and I will see all of you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.